Any updates on the construction at the additional care facilities? The question is about the construction at our alternative care facilities. And we are in contact with our CEOs uh, from our hospitals on a daily basis. We have a number of options uh, uh, that are on the table uh, to include uh, expanding our capacity within the walls, our confines of a, a current hospital. Uh, we have options uh, working with our National Guard where we would put up MASH type of uh, units, tents uh, outside of hospitals. And then we have the option of uh, building the three alternative sites, uh, one in Northern Virginia, uh, one in Richmond, and, and one in Hampton Roads. And, and uh, as I've said, this is a fluid uh, situation. We have made arrangements for all of those options, um, but I haven't decided to move forward at this stage uh, with the alternative care facilities. But uh, in the event that I need to make that decision, uh, we have everything ready to go. don't seem to have the compassion that your administration may have talked about versus those who say this is the right thing to do, they deserve to be let out in light of this COVID-19. Some people feel as though you know, they're inmates, they broke the law, this is kind of what happens, if you will. Sure. I'm, I appreciate that question, and it's uh, regarding uh, releasing inmates, and uh, we do have some plans in the works. Uh, it will require a, a, a passage uh, by the uh, General Assembly when they come back on the 22nd. But I, I mean, if it's okay, maybe let uh, Secretary Moran just uh, go into that in a little bit more detail. It's a great question. Thank you. Secretary Moran. <clears throat> yes, as uh, mentioned on Friday, uh, the governor has proposed budget language for the first time that uh, allowing DOC to actually have some discretion with respect to who may be released. As you know, in parole, we, uh, we have very few, less than 2,500 are even eligible for parole. And so there have been, uh, you know, we recognize that these are confined spaces, much like long-term care facilities, nursing homes, special care needs to be paid to those in a confined setting. So the governor has uh, provided legislation that we would hope the legislature to uh, act favorably on. It would apply to approximately uh, 2,000, a little less than 2,000 inmates who have one year left, one year or less left on their sentence. And DOC will uh, review each and every one of those cases and determine whether or not they're appropriate for public safety and their welfare. And if I might just, you know, Governor, if I might just take a moment. Uh, you know, we, we have the lowest recidivism rate in the nation, something the governor and I have mentioned a number of times, we're so proud of DOC, the reentry programs. They have rigorous, robust reentry programs in our facilities. And we have the lowest in the nation recidivism rate for four straight years. And that is because we create a plan for success. Uh, we make sure that an individual goes through reentry while incarcerated, and then there is a plan for success when they're released, which may require mental health services, substance abuse disorders. Uh, to treat this substance abuse disorder, housing, employment opportunities, all of which have been substantially disrupted right now. So uh, we have heard from advocates, we've heard from family members, we need to approach this in a humane fashion, a responsible fashion, and a smart fashion. That's exactly what the governor's budget language um, reflects, in that we're, we've, we've looked at this, uh, reviewed it, and I think this is a part of the puzzle along with parole, uh, that we can achieve the health and safety of those who are incarcerated and also the health and safety of those who are released. Thank you, Brian. Thank you all again for joining us today and to the, the press, the journalists that are here, it is just so, so important that we get accurate and updated information uh, to Virginians. And I, I wanna thank you all for, for the job that, that you're doing. Um, and also thanks for being part of the modeling uh, session today that was at, at noon. And I, just to reiterate, I, I think the two messages that, that came out of that uh, were number one, that uh, the social distancing, the frequent washing of our hands, the, the guidelines that we have uh, put forth in Virginia are working. And so to all of you across the Commonwealth, I, I know this is a, a difficult time, but uh, we're moving in a positive direction. So I. I thank you for that. The, the second message was that if we stop what we're doing too soon, uh, that it is clear 
that we will have a second peak and that it could be worse than what we're dealing with right now. So I appreciate your vigilance, your perseverance, and your uh, obeying of the, the guidelines. Uh, uh, we will have some further announcements, uh, as we said on, on Wednesday, specifically uh, regarding our businesses, uh, our barber shops, uh, uh, salons, et cetera. So uh, I hope everybody uh, continues to do well, and we will look forward to being with you again on Wednesday. Thank you all so much. And you have been watching Governor Ralph Northam live from Capitol Grounds in downtown Richmond, giving us an update on the COVID-19 response here in Virginia. Just a couple of points to reiterate. I talked about the Virginia-specific model on COVID-19 in Virginia that's been developed by UVA. It says social distancing and other uh, obligations are working, slowing the spread of the virus here in the Commonwealth. The governor noted that Virginia hospitals have sufficient capacity to handle patients at this time and said if we lift the stay at home too soon cases will spike higher and sooner the key is to keep doing what we're doing he says we'll get lives back to normal as soon as we can safely can and we'll ease restrictions as soon as we can uh, talked about an executive order that closes non-essential businesses through april 23rd looking at the peak of the covid 19 here in late april early may uh, in virginia he said the order will be extended if necessary and will announce specific details on wednesday Day at the briefing on uh, at two o'clock in the afternoon said that the state is working to develop a quick turnaround testing for COVID-19 and also talked about how the state is making more resources available to expand education for teaching our children at home. Uh, Virtual Virginia is now available to all teachers to support teachers. The VA TV classroom has been launched and will air on public television stations here across Virginia. Uh, just to reiterate the numbers from today, total cases in Virginia 5,747 cases. That is an increase of 473 cases in the past 24 hours and 149 deaths from COVID-19 here in Virginia. That is an increase of eight in the last 24 hours. We'll have a full update for you on the CBS 6 News at 4. In the meantime, we'll send you back to regular programming here on CBS 6.